$10,000 still can be yours, Flat Earthers. That's right, the $10,000 sextant challenge is still unclaimed. I have yet to receive even one submission. Not even one. But I have gotten some feedback. I'll cover two of the pieces of feedback that I got. And, and the good news is I updated the challenge. The old one still is there. Use that one if you want. The new one is there, version two. It's on my website. Um, so the feedback I got was that Nathan Oakley, the king of of Flat Earth sextant-based navigation, um, well, let's listen to what he says. Because if he says, well, you can't use those star charts, they're globe star charts. <laughs> no, they're not. They've come from the first place from a flat plane with elevation angle measurements. So you might be under the misapprehension that this is globe, but your globe was derived from a flat plane, my friend. So to exclude it on the basis that it's not flat Earth because it's a star chart and you think it's only in relation to a globe, you don't understand how your globe's been developed then, do you? Well, Nathan, that's an interesting claim, uh, but you've never supported it with evidence. In fact, it doesn't have any supporting evidence at all. I know that because I've looked into it. Um, you don't quite understand how... Uh, you can gather how you can get an angle from a curved surface. So let's review a little bit here. Here's Euclid's Book 3, Proposition 18. You can see there's a circle, and tangent to a point on the circle is a line. Now, if by extension, you can have a sphere, and you can have tangent to a point on the sphere, a plane. That plane is the horizontal plane. Now, an angle from that plane is not something that you can, uh, that's not a challenge, is it? You can get an angle to a plane. In fact, here is a picture, a diagram of what is actually happening when you use a sextant on the Earth. You can see there is uh, an angle, A, from the visible horizon up to the, the distant object that's being sighted. Nothing of that diagram is impossible in reality. So Nathan, your claim is is empty, and and you you've said it to me forty nine times. You think I don't know if you've counted that many times or not, but it doesn't matter actually. Saying the same false thing many times doesn't make it automatically true. I know maybe maybe you missed that day in kindergarten, Nathan. But uh, yeah, that's that's saying it many times doesn't doesn't add truthiness to it. So um, it's not it's not a, the case at all. But, but anyway, Nathan, um, just for you, just for you, I will allow you to use the celestial sphere. It's a little strange to use the celestial sphere for flat Earth, but you go right ahead. The rules give a provision to use it. All you need to do is explain how that sphere <laughs> is is being used in relation to to the earth. So go right ahead and do that. Now, the second provision, the second change I've made uh, is based on feedback from Bev. Bev is a flat earther that doesn't like to be called flat earther, but in the definitions section, which is newly added of the challenge, I define flat earth and flat earther, which includes what Bev is, Bev claims that all horizontals are parallel on the Earth, which, of course, everybody knows means it would just make it flat Earth. He's like, well, it's not flat because there's hills. Yeah, we get that, Bev. You don't need to say that. We get it. Uh, anyway, so Bev, the flat Earther, as defined in my challenge, is is uh, has complained that I used the, the phrase flat Earth geometry. Now, that is a specifically something that I got from Nathan Oakley. I suggested to Bev that he ask Nathan Oakley. He didn't ask him. Don't know why. And then, then I discovered that Bev, in fact, from 2020, mentioned the phrase flat earth geometry in relation to an invitation that he gave to come to a Discord server to be taught about how flat earth geometry is dangerous to the globe. So Bev, got a, he's a little confused. 
So what I did, being the helpful guy I am, I went to the Discord server and I asked Bev if he could give the definitions and axioms and postulates or whatever for, for flat earth geometry to me so that I could deliver it to Bev, the flat earther on Twitter, so that he knew how to use flat earth geometry. But but Bev on Discord was not forthcoming with the information. So Bev from Twitter was having, a, you know, wasn't being informed. Anyway, I clarified all of this in the new version, did away with the phrase flat earth geometry, and instead just leave it open to any math you want. And geometry being a subset of math, it's all good. So Bev, good news for you. Um, you best hop to it because Nathan might get there first, right? <laughs> he might figure out how to use flat earth celestial navigation before you figure out how to use horizontals are always parallel earth navigation. But uh, there you go, both of you. I'm sure you're super excited about it. This video serves as, as the announcement of the, the new challenge, which means that I need to put in here, right there, the SHA hash of the official rules. This hash cannot change, and it's in the video. So if, if you download the rules and you get a different different hash, you know I changed them. So I can't change them. The, the essence of the challenge is the same. The money is still in escrow. Somebody else holds it. There is still an opportunity for independent arbitration. Should you disagree with my decision, that's perfectly fine. Um, and the rules are clear, measurably objective. Right. All you need to do is get within 25 miles of the actual position and you get it. You just got to do it twice and specify the method you did. Super clear, super measurable. No, I mean, there's really how could you need independent arbitration? I don't know, but it's there at least because it's so obvious to anybody. If the answer is within 25 miles, you're good. Super easy. Anyway. Thank you, Bev and Nathan, for the feedback. I'm sure you will be anxiously working on this new challenge.